have you join us on nationwide thank you for joining us i am lydia odj orchi the police have sprung sprung into action to restore confidence in the ocean state college of technology after an alleged attack let's now join Tokwe alabi for an update on the situation hello Tokwe. So far, so good. The situation is under control here in SRK as officers and men of the Nigerian police force are on ground to ensure that normalcy return to the town. Of course, one of the captured uh, victims has been killed while one of the officers was also injured in the search for the rescue of those that were kidnapped. Uh, effort is still on by the Nigerian police to unravel the mystery surrounding the kidnapping and the death of the lecturer from SLK, Tokwe Alabi, NTA News. New Thank you, Tokwe. Protesters under the name of Forum of Non-Governmental Organizations of Nigeria, FOGON, have asked the United States Embassy in Nigeria not to issue its visa to former Vice President and PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar. The group staged a protest to the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. Foreign desk correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. <laughs> The group was at the U.S. Embassy to register its displeasure over claims that the embassy is entertaining visa requests from former Vice President and PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar. Yes, we are here to appeal to American government, to American embassy, not to grant former Vice President Atiku Abubakar yes. any visa to enter America at this auspicious period in time. The group's convener, Wale Batmo, says issuing a visa to former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who they claim has corruption allegations in the United States, could amount to interference in 2019 general elections. What we are saying is that Vice, former Vice President Atiku has been denied visa for 14 years. Why is it now, on the eve of election, that they want to grant that visa? Yes. We are smelling rats, and we are saying that they want to use the name of America to score sheep, Political group. Yeah, that is why, and that is why we are here to say that America should not fall for that prey. A day after the election, they can grant visa to whoever they like. Yeah. Hey, they do Although this petition was not handed over to any particular officer from the U.S. Embassy, nevertheless, the group presented its petition to the members of the media present and says it has already sent a copy to the ambassador. From the U.S. Embassy here in Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NT News. Thanks, Simon. Our next report from Mina says the Fulani socio-cultural groups in Niger State have pledged to continue to rally around President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Abubakar Sani Bello for their contributions to prom the promotion of peace between farmers and herders. Dawda Muhammad reports that this is the fallout of the meeting by officials of the three groups in Mina. The leaders of the three Fulani groups at the meeting commended President Muhammad Buhari and Governor for ensuring sustained peace among herders and farmers in the state. The Fulanis in the state are also happy with the ongoing resuscitation of the Bobi Grazing Reserve in Mariga local government area. Another area that the groups also commended the present administration for is its intervention in the agricultural transformation and education sectors through the whole school development approach. 
The United States Director General Nomadic Affairs, Ardo Abdullahi Adamu Babayo, who doubles as the chairman of Fulani Consultative Forum, said President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Abakar Sanibelu have done a lot for the citizens of the country, having stood by the Fulani since assumption of office. This is the result of good governors and other governors who have led from Governor Abakar Al Sadiq Sanibelu. Momona Goyom Bayang, General Muhammad Buhari. We all reach a consensus to support President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Abu Bakr Sani Bello for a second time. The Niger State Director General Governance Engagement and Solidarity Matters Government House, Yakubu Salo, while commending the Fulanis for endorsing President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Abu Bakr Sani Bello, appealed to them to ensure they collect their PVCs. Imina Dauda Muhammad, NTA News. Still on the 2019 general elections, former Deputy Governor of Adamawa State, Saad Tahir, and former state member have defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to All Progressives Congress, APC, with a promise to work towards the victory of President Muhammad Buhari and all APC candidates in the 2019 general elections. Rayan Ubala reports that they were speaking during the inauguration of APC Northeast Secretariat of Menene, Buhari Bindo Campaign Organization. The former Deputy Governor of Adamao State, Saad M. Sitahir, who led order defectors to the APC, expressed satisfaction with the good governance of President Muhammad Buhari and the infrastructural developments in Adamao State by the federal government. He promised to use the Menene Buhari Bindo campaign organization effectively to mobilize support for the victory of Buhari Abindo at the polls. Governor Muhammad Umar Chibrila at the occasion said, Adamawa is an APC state and will deliver it to the party for more dividends of democracy to the state. Various APC stakeholders in Adamawa state said, the benefit from the various social intervention programs in the state are enough reasons to give APC block votes at the polls. In Iola, Raya Nubala, NTA News. Following the lifting of ban on governorship campaigns, United Democratic Party UDP governorship candidate in Taraba State Senator Aisha Jumai Al Hassan has unveiled her manifest to get towards the overall development of the state. Joseph Zanna Agambu reports that security, agriculture, health, and education were top priorities. Flagging off a governorship campaign, Senator Aisha Jumai Al Hassan appreciated the leadership and members of the United Democratic Party, UDP, for the opportunity to fly the party's flag in the forthcoming governorship polls. She promised people of the state a purposeful leadership driven by both public and private sector if given the mandate, unveiling a manifesto containing a vision and mission, U.S. security of lives and property, agricultural revolution for food security, education, health, and economic transformation were accorded top priority. The UDP governorship candidate, Senator Aisha Jumia Al Hassan, said, All these are achievable with the right policies in place. The state UDP chairman, Al Haji Sani Hassan Chul, who received a large number of defectors from other political parties at the occasion, said, The party is fully prepared to take over power in the state come 2019. In Jalingu, Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. Away from politics now. Considering the fact that Nigeria's value-added tax VAT is said to be one of the lowest in the world, experts at a national workshop on the law of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 advocating an increase in the VAT rate to at least 10%. Online Kojo reports that this is at the instance of the Nigerian Law Reform Commission. Taxation is seen as the life wire of every nation, and the level of development most times depend on the amount generated through it. It is in realization that dependency on crude oil earning alone cannot sustain public expenditure, and the need for diversification of revenue base that these experts see tax reform as imperative. What the commission is proposing is that there should be an increase, and we have proposed 10%. I sincerely agree to jack up the percentage being generated. 5% is rather too low. Increase in VAT rates, experts say, will increase VAT revenue that will cushion the effect of global drop in the price of oil. 
And this, they argue, will also lead to social, economic, and infrastructural growth. We are exploring and working to exploit all possible avenues to increase efficiency, expand the tax base, and ensure greater development for Nigeria, even at the present rate. There's an attempt to harmonize all the bad laws in the whole ECOWAS region. As lawmakers, we are always there to support any reform initiative. The consensus here is that through taxation, government channel resources towards important projects. Olayin Kaujo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the strategic role of Auditors General at federal, state and local governments in the country in pushing Nigeria's drive towards the achievement of sustainable development goals was the focus of the 2018 Auditors General Conference in Abuja. President Muhammad Buhari, in a message delivered by the head of civil service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, urged participants to promote trust and transparency in governance. Chimobi Walter Naji has that. Now, these Auditors General of the Federation are here in Abuja to sort ways of addressing Nigeria's achievements in the Sustainable Development Goals and, of course, to answer questions that may arise as to how funds are managed in addressing some of these issues. Questions such as what progress has Nigeria achieved with monies appropriated and spent so far in the budget, issues affecting ability for better performance, and whether Nigeria is getting in value for money spent at all levels each year are some of the questions begging for answers at this meeting. The Auditors General are trying to answer these questions to address the country's success level in the Sustainable Development Goals. The issue therefore is this, what audit have we concluded or conducted over the past years that can help shed light and help Nigeria towards achieving the SDGs. President Mohamed Buhari, represented by the head of service, reiterated that auditors are integral part of government development and war against corruption. He urged them to adhere strictly to codes of conduct of the profession. I want to empathically state that your constitutional duty and responsibility to stop corruption even before it happens is very unique, especially with the independence that it guarantees. It is expected that at the end of this meeting, participants would have come up with a standardized format on reporting of the Sustainable Development Goals and its performance. In Chimobi, Walter Naji, NT News. Thanks, Chimobi. Senate is intensifying efforts towards improving Nigeria's mining and geological sector. In furtherance of this, the legislators have passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish School of Mines and Geological Studies, Guyuk, Adamawa State. Senators submit that the institution will, to a great extent, provide professional capacity for indigenous miners and generate more revenue for Nigeria. The bill for an act to repeal the Federal College of Education Act and reenact the Federal Colleges of Education, which seeks to unify academic and administrative structure of colleges of education with other tertiary institutions in the country, was also passed for second reading. Meanwhile, the Senate has approved the request of its ad hoc committee on promissory note program and a bond issuance to settle inherited local debts and refunds to state governments for projects executed on behalf of the federal government. And now the House of Representatives in cognizance of the imperative of providing social safety nets to disadvantaged Nigerians passed a second reading a bill that would enable constitutional amendments to that effect. The bill seeks to amend the Public Procurement Act 2024 to make it mandatory for 20% of federal government's procurement in a financial year to be awarded to economically disadvantaged group. The beneficiaries include new indigenous companies, indigenous youths, and other Nigerians that fall within the segment. When is this plenary featured the swearing in of three newly elected members to fill vacancies at the House. Details in our subsequent bulletin. The Parliamentary Staff Association Nigeria, 
National Assembly chapter has suspended its picketing until Monday, 10th December 2010, when the executive will get back to Congress for progress reports. In a statement by Publicity Secretary of the Association, Sani Chiroma, hereby directs its members to maintain calm and be law abiding while negotiation continues. More than three years into the anti corruption crusade of the APC led federal government, guests on Good Morning Nigeria have commended the efforts so far and achievements recorded, saying the anti graft campaign has reduced impunity in public office. Going forward, they urged the government to make the fight against corruption all inclusive with no sacred cows. Murjana to Adam Said has more. The stern position of the present administration's fight against corruption has continued to generate commendation in Nigeria and beyond. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria say high profile convictions scaled so far indicate that corruption is no longer tolerated in Nigeria. Uh, we have just uh, produced um, a system, uh, corruption risk assessment on the e-government platforms, that is e-government e systems, TSA, IPPIS, uh, GIPMIS, to uh, see areas, you know, that, uh, you know, will allow people to capitalize on, on that to uh, amass or to, you know, um, you know, misappropriate uh, public funds. The president has gone round. He has gone to several countries from the inception of his administration to see that um, his fight is not defeated from the outside, or rather, to put it another way, to see that his fight is successful. The anti-corruption institutions, EFCC, ICPC, say the administration is doing well but more need to be done to sustain the successes achieved. I would prefer to pitch my tent with the view that it is, it is a stakeholder's that can be foisted on the, at the doorstep of the defense alone. The fight against corruption is on, is very healthy, is vibrant, is vigorous, is unending, and we have one of the best um, support that we, we have ever had. The Bar Association has a role to play. If lawyers engage in conduct that is a joy to be unprofessional, the association should be able to discipline that lawyer. Because what is going on is amount to professional indiscipline. On the phone stash in foreign countries, the experts commended the federal government in doing all it could to return the looted funds. But appeal for more cooperation national community in the fight against corruption in Abuja, Morijana to Adam Said, NTE News. Minister of Transport inspects rail project. Details of this and more with Michael in Lagos. Over to you, Michael. Yeah, and welcome to Lagos. The Minister of Transportation, Retimi Amechi, has charged the contractors handling the Lagos Ibadan Railway project to do more to ensure that the project meets the new deadline. He started this after an inspection tour of the project from Lagos to Abeokuta, where he expressed dismay over the fact that the earlier deadline could not be met. Tunde Saiki has more. The Minister and his entourage took off from the Alagwado end of the railway line. At every interval, he stopped to assess the progress of work and its quality. They are having challenges. That's the greatest problem we have because they are having challenges. The challenges are numerous. We, are, we didn't experience those challenges here. They talked about being attacked by communities. They talked about being attacked by armed robbers, equipment being stolen. We didn't experience that between Abeokuta and uh, Oyo. I mean, Ibadan. So I've told them to also brace up with that and get the security men involved so they can be protected. At the Papalanto train station where he met with the contractors, consultants and other stakeholders, the minister hoped that the new deadline for the completion will be met. I expect and I've told them that there must be a train on the track before, the, before February. From where to where? It doesn't matter where, but there must be a train on the track that makes sense. And what I mean makes sense, that makes transport sense, that should be able to convey passengers up to Abeokuta, if not up to Ibadan. And we've agreed that everybody must walk towards it, so we're working towards it. He also promised to make the visit fortnightly to enable him to monitor the progress of work more effectively. 
in Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. A non-governmental organization, Mass Medical Mission, has launched a community mobilization campaign tagged Health Education on the Go. Jaikena Bakoya reports that the initiative is aimed at improving cancer awareness, prevention and treatment. Clinical statistics show that on a daily basis, hundreds of Nigerians, young and old, lose their lives to various forms of cancer and their related risk factors. Medical experts say this is largely due to late presentation as a result of ignorance. This unfortunate situation is what the health education on the go seeks to address. We now have these mobile units that are going to the communities to carry out awareness to everyone, not just women, men, women, children. So people should take advantage of it. The Mass Medical Mission says well-equipped fixed cancer centers available in Lagos, Abuja, Asaba and Portacourt are also open to the public for free. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakpoya, NTN News. We now go over to our Sokoto Network Center for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon and welcome to Sokoto. Nigerians with um, complex diseases would no lo will no longer have to travel abroad for medical attention because the country has the capacity to tackle such cases. This came to the fore at the Scientific Conference of Urology Surgeons from across Nigeria and beyond who gathered in Sokoto to brainstorm and share ideas on the new techniques of urology surgery. Muhammad Nasir has more. Complex urological diseases like Ibelhazia, kidney stone, infection and obstruction of ureteral genital disorders are some of the challenges of reconstructive urology that often compel Nigerians to travel abroad for medical care. Prior to the conference, system patients were operated on by foreign and local surgeons using endo-urology techniques at the Institute of Urology and Neprology, Osman Napoli University Teaching Hospital, Sokoto. So what is happening now inside, there's a patient with kidney stones. And now they're going to pass instrument through the natural normal orifice, you must have seen. Then the in instrument will, be, will reach the kidney, get to this region of the stone, and we use laser machine to um, dust it. It is a very good development, and we urge other also uh, expert association and professional association to take you into this intervention. One of the challenges of urology management in Nigeria is lack of uniform guidelines for effective management of patients. New guidelines have, however, been developed. So that when we are talking about managing prostate enlargement in Nigeria, that we are seen to be doing the same thing. They are bringing new technology here to us and it's something that we are very happy about. Speakers believe that establishment of the Institute of Urology and Neprology in Osman Napoli University Teaching Hospital has not only improved urology services in the northwest of Nigeria, but speaks a volume about what can be done in the future. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. Embermonts are periods characterized by heavy traffic and increasing rates of accidents along major highways. Muhammad Nasser is at the Central Motor Park live on situation in Sokoto Metropolis. Nigerians travel from one destination to other during the last four months of the year, which otherwise refers to Ember months. December being the last month is a period in which people travel to their destinations to celebrate Xmas and other festivities with their loved ones. For instance, here in Sokoto Central Motor Park, people are trooping to get vehicle to move to their destination. For instance, as you can see, people are there anxiously waiting for the car to travel to their destination. With me in the park is manager FG Transport in person of Haruna Babayara. Mala Haruna, how will you describe movement of people during this period? Yeah, in most cases in this type of period, the passengers troop in because each and everyone is anxious to go back to the destination for Christmas celebrations. Sometimes Federal Receptive Co and other stakeholders are calling on drivers to adhere to the traffic rules to ensure safety of passengers. What can you say about this? Yeah, we thank them very much. Almost every year by this time they do come and have lectures, explanations, seminars and the rest in which we also try to make our drivers to understand that the road is always busy, they have to be cautious and uh, can witness it. Inshallah, not by our protection, by God's protection, you hardly get such an accident 
with Trello Zero as boss. Stakeholders like Federal Road Safety Co. has been calling on people during this period to ensure safety of passengers. With me here in Sokoto Moto Park is Batoemi Okapo, alias known as Poti Poti. Uh, there is no problem much because when we move, we, are, we move gently and by God's grace we are reaching uh, on each uh, safety without any problem. Anywhere we have uh, any disturbance, maybe by this uh, immigration or something like that, we we'll stop, they will check, then we we'll start moving. Sokoto Moto Park has become a beehive of activities with passengers who are willing to travel to their destination to celebrate Xmas and other festivities. If motorists and passengers adhere to the calls by road safety to ensure safety, the rate of accident on major roads could be reduced to a bare minimum. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. And that's it from here. The news will continue after these messages. Please stay with us. Welcome back. The news continues in Abuja. To word of further threat to national security, especially now that 2019 general elections is approaching, the Office of the National Security Advisor, in partnership with the British High Commission, brought together all first responders from all armed forces, security and law enforcement agencies, and MDAs to assess their competence in responding to crisis in case of eventualities. Ronke Kolawuli has more. What we have here is a make-believe terrorist attack on a shopping mall. So the task of the special force here is how to neutralize the five attackers and rescue the 15 hostages in their custody. Code crisis response exercise, the training falls under the purview of the Office of the National Security Advisor as the main intelligence gathering unit to identify potential threats and neutralize them before they become full-blown security breaches. To avoid panic among the populace, journalists were not allowed into the hall where the simulation exercise was held, but an observer who was given the opportunity to watch gives an assessment. From what I observed in this uh, simulation arena, uh, our armed forces have demonstrated high level of uh, capability to handle uh, situations like this when uh, it occurs, God forbid, and uh, particularly what is very much evident is the level of synergy they have demonstrated. Mission was accomplished as all the hostages were rescued while the terrorists were neutralized and arrested. Coordinator, Counter-Terrorist Center, Office of the National skills displayed by officers during the training. For what we have demonstrated in these two days, even my foreign partners will know that we are ready to confront the challenges of our environment with respect to all those criminals, those people that don't want good things for our country, that we are on top of the situation. The simulation exercise was the third in the series. Ronke Kolawoli, NTDUs. Next report from Marrakech says, honoring international commitments to unlock the potential of all migrants for development is a theme of the 11th Global Forum on Migration Development taking place in Marrakech, Morocco. Our correspondent on location, Joy Osiago, tells us about the dominant issue, which is to change the narratives of migrants and displaced persons as simply victims or burden for host societies. What I experience will make me to tell that any parents, no friend, no any relationship, I will not allow them to enter this Libya road. This is one of the numerous stories that led to the draft of the Global Compact on Refugees and the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, about to be endorsed by United Nations Member States in Marrakech, Morocco. From legal inclusion of migrants to better treatment of undocumented immigrants, the organizers of the Global Forum on Migration hope to provide a more comprehensive picture of the complex and sometimes realities of global migration. Discussions here will also focus on the north-south dimension of transnational mobility, 
migration link issues from Annexa South North and South South platform that talks about shared responsibilities and similar challenges. The Federal Commissioner, Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Umar Farouk, is the leader of the Nigerian delegation. Nigerian position is there, the African Union position is there. The government of President Mohamed Buhari is very much committed to the issue of internally displaced people uh, in, in the Northeast, especially whereby even the government has set up a presidential committee on the Northeast uh, initiative. Nigeria, in collaboration with Networks of Civil Society, is also hosting a side event with the aim of strengthening state and non-state actors' partnerships at the national and sub-national levels for effective migration management in the country. We want to see issues of human rights of migrants be on the table. We want to see issues of international cooperation between countries and, uh, and also international organizations to be on the table. We want to block the gap that are existing already between destination and the origin countries. In Marrakesh, Morocco, Joy Usiago, NT News. And back home, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, is confident that Nigeria has the potential to be the industrial hub of Africa if the right policies are put in place. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okichuku Enelama, and representatives of the EU, China, Japan, and key players in the manufacturing industry are also of the opinion that Africans must convert their raw materials to finished products to achieve accelerated industrial industrialization of the region. Emmanuel Ayimiro reports. Industrialization is said to serve as a powerful engine for sustainable development and poverty eradication. Since 1989, African Industrialization Day is marked to enhance international cooperation and dialogue on the Pan-African Industrialization Agenda. The 2018 edition of the day has Promoting regional value chains in Africa, a pathway for accelerating Africa's structural transformation, industrialization, and pharmaceutical production as a theme, and UNIDO wants regional value chain environment that will promote regional trade within the region. It is following immediately the country program we just signed, which is going to pave the way of the cooperation between UNIDO and the government of Nigeria to ensure that the industrialization is becoming a reality, is becoming a mainstay to support the economic diversification of this country, is leading the process of the economy in this region. This theme is also in line with our programs at the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. It's very heavily focused on industrialization and on value added. Norway. The European Union, Sweden, and other allies were on hand to pledge their support for African industrialization. We stand ready to share China's experience on industrialization with Africa. Manufacturers in Nigeria used the opportunity to ask for infrastructural support to enable them grow instead of foreign manufacturers dominating the industry on the continent. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Still on national development, the survey and mining sector are considered crucial institutions and infrastructural development of Nigeria. Now evolving issues around earth tremors, boundary disputes, building collapse and related cases set the line for discuss on NTA Tuesday Life program. Momso Demiendati has the excerpts. Every now and then, there are evolving issues surrounding erosion, flood, communal clashes resulting from boundary matters, illegal mining ending in multiple consequences, security threats, building collapse and most recent earth tremor witnessed in Abuja to mention just a few. All these are tied to the survey and mining sector, a critical area that determines about 80% of activities on earth surface because the whole globe is moving and it is a movement that produces those hills and mountains you see right 
Just and the, definitely, uh, the movement keeps on going because the rocks are of different ages. Mm -hmm. And beneath us, it's just like, uh, so these things will happen, but we need to monitor and give early warning signs. <clears throat> Although the Nigerian surveyors are taking advantage of sophisticated and technologically advanced equipment to assist security agents in mapping out and other services, much more is desired to be done. We are about 58 years since independence. Most of our structures are now getting old. Do we monitor these structures? Are we measuring the structures, the roads, the airports? All the, there must be a government policy on subsidence monitoring, that is defense, navigation, and then sometimes surveillance. So the incursion of these technological advances into the surveying profession has greatly <coughs> improved the surveying profession. If you say we are going to be circumstant by the provision of the law, all these new technologies we are speaking, we cannot be able to apply them because you are going to contravene the provision of the law. Okay. So we need to update our laws so that it can be concurrent and current with the realities on the ground. Thank Looking you. at the crucial roles the professionals play, discuss and say it has become pertinent that they are consulted by every Nigerian before carrying out any activity on land surface. In Abuja, Momsa Damien Dati, NT News. The National Orientation Agency is on mass advocacy for the protection of public assets and infrastructure against vandalism in the six area councils of the FCT. To this end, a one-day sensitization forum for opinion leaders in the councils has been held where the agency charged members of the public to take ownership of the assets to enhance national security and development. The representative of the director general said the sensitization conference is aimed at consolidating on the achievement of the present administration on and structural transformation that is ongoing in the country. The present administration is witnessing massive infrastructural development in different, different sectors of the economy. Unless these infrastructure are protected, the goals of the infrastructural development of this administration may not be fully achieved. The call for protection of national assets is so critical at this time of electionary campaigns. Speakers at the conference harped on the need to report any act of vandalism to the law enforcement agencies. The National Judicial Institute is sharpening the skills of judicial correspondence with emphasis on avoiding sensational reportage that will heat up the polity. This is coming few months to the general elections and Liu Tukur reports. It is an established fact that journalists play a critical role in the development of a nation as the society relies on the media for information. With the general election around the corner, political activities are rife with many candidates already seeking redress in courts as a result of grievances from political parties' primary elections. Against this backdrop, the National Judicial Institute is training judiciary correspondents to equip them with the necessary skills that will enable them to report court proceedings and other judiciary activities professionally. Your actions impact on the judiciary since you must be guided by the ethics and code of conduct of your profession. This is yet another wonderful opportunity for us to tap from the knowledge of our resource persons. With the team, Fostering a cordial working relationship between judiciary correspondents and the judiciary, the workshop, which is the fourth in its series, is expected to enhance reportage in that arm of government. In Abuja, Ali Utuku, NTA News. Presidential panel sitting on South, sitting in Imo. Bright has details of this and more stories from Enugu Center. Bright, it's over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Enugu Network Center. 
The Federal House of Representatives Committee on FEMA has inspected some federal roads in the southeast as part of its oversight function. The committee expressed willingness to expedite action in the payment of outstanding funds for the completion of the projects. Chegono Aru completes the report. The team led by BID, AK, inspected the road rehabilitation of Enugu Portakot Expressway, Ogo Mako, Achi Road Interchange, Mbowo Inyi, Apama Junction, Oguntu Interchange, and Echarambo in Ogu local government area of Enugu State. The contractor of the site explained that the linkage to neighboring villages and the drainage system, which he said posed a threat, hence the concretization of the surface has become an access road to neighboring villages. The leader of the committee, Bid Eke, commended the effort of the contractor and promised to facilitate the payment of the balance of his contract fund. Level of work done already, as you can see, the asphalt is supposed to be, the asphalt, the total length of asphalt will be 1.6 kilometer and already we've achieved 600 meters of asphalt. So we have around 900 meters of asphalt left. The contractor has done this work to the best of uh, our ability um, according to the standard. This is the first time we are having a thing like this in our community, uh, a project of uh, this magnitude. So, and I want to tell you that uh, this community is happy. The House of Representatives Committee on FEMA is expected to visit other federal roads under FEMA in the southeast in Enugu, the Enugu State Governor Ifan Yogwai has charged core members serving in the state to channel their efforts towards activities and projects that will impact positively on the lives of members of the communities where they are deployed to. The Governor gave the charge during the closing ceremony of the 2018 Batch C Stream 2 orientation course, which took place at Ogo Local Government Council. Jude Abogo has the details. For the past three weeks, these core members have been exposed to a series of trainings ranging from entrepreneurial skills acquisition courses to military and paramilitary drills which are being displayed here. They are expected to use the knowledge garnered during the orientation course and those acquired from their institutions of learning in bringing about positive developments in their places of primary assignments. Within the period that you stay here, you must have observed that the NYC camp is not only a reflection of a mini Nigeria, but also a veritable platform for a gender and national unity and integration. All you come members, for all this remarkable purpose, to direct your affairs throughout the service here and beyond. As soon as you get to your place of primary assignment, settle down quickly and make yourself relevant in the community. Beep, beep. With the official closing of this orientation course, these core members will now move to their various places of primary assignments where they will contribute their quotas to the national development. From Abuka, Enugu, Jude Abu, NTNS. That's our contribution from Enugu Network Center. Let's now join Caleb and Jazz for more reports from that zone. Hello, Caleb. Welcome to Jazz. Less than 75 days to the 2019 general elections, more than 339,000 permanent voter cards are yet to be collected by registered voters in Plateau State. Priscilla Grumnan is at the INEC Secretariat in Jaws to find out how eligible voters are responding to the appeal by the Commission to pick up their cards. Priscilla, over to you. Out of the 496,000 registered voters in Plata State, only about 114,000 have so far collected their PVCs, a figure confirmed to us by the resident electoral commissioner, Aji Ali Hussein Pai. He said the collection processes have been decentralized to the 207 registration centers in the 17 local government areas of the state to ease collection. Without the permanent voters card, you cannot be authenticated, neither can you be accredited before you vote. So I please call on all those that are yet to collect their permanent voters card to endeavor 
to really collect this before the commencement of the election in February. The resident electoral commissioner further appealed to political parties and candidates to avoid any form of hate speech that will heat up the polity but go about their political campaigns peacefully. We also appeal to them to please ensure that they do not engage youth in violent campaigns and thuggery. But if the politicians refuse to hit, we now call on the youth to ensure that they resist any temptation to be used by these political parties and their candidates to engage in thuggery and violence. He added that relevant stakeholders such as political parties and candidates, traditional and religious leaders, youth, security and the media have been engaged towards the sensitization for a credible, free and fair general elections in 2019. It's back to you. Thank you Priscilla. That's Priscilla at the INEC office in Jos. A total of 1,700 Christians from Plateau State are participating in this year's Christian pilgrimage to Israel. Screening of the intending pilgrims has so far covered about 600 persons. Executive Secretary of the Plateau State Christian Pilgrims Welfare Board, Reverend Father George Gorab, who disclosed this to NTA News, assured citizens of a hitch-free exercise this year. Ashezigo Pep reports. Christianity has a strong tradition of pilgrimage, both to sites relevant to the New Testament narrative or sites associated with latter saints and miracles. It is in fulfillment of this that yearly pilgrimage is being performed. Plateau State is not left out with adequate arrangements in place to ensure a hitch free exercise. Describing the screening as a necessary tool, the executive secretary of the board said the gesture by the government to sponsor citizens is in line with its social welfare support to the Holy Land for moral and sound minds, which will in turn transform the society. Reverend Father Gorab called on the intending pilgrims to desist from acts capable of punishing the image of the state and nation, urging them to exhibit a high sense of maturity and be worthy ambassadors. I expect to see people who come up from pilgrimage to say, this year's pilgrimage has changed my life. It's a journey in search of um, moral values. Um, people go back to well nourished spiritually. The exercise, which commenced on Monday, the 26th, will end on Friday, 30th November. In Jos, Ashes Gupep, NTA News. The federal government is intensifying efforts at extinguishing the fire of violent extremism among Nigerian communities. One of such efforts, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, targeted youths from Plateau and Kogi states. Director General of the Citizenship and Leadership Training Center, Sherry Hills, Jules, who superintended the change process, charged the 98 participants of the course 1109 of the center to make the difference in their communities. Abba Abuakari Yakubu reports. Aimed at rehabilitating youths that were engaged in antisocial vices such as violence, drug abuse, prostitution, and joblessness who are vulnerable in crime situations. The participants were selected from various communities in the two states to pilot programs initiated by UNDP on how to transform society through psychosocial and value reorientation. Director of General Citizenship and Leadership Training Center, JOS, Mr. Jonah Bauer, appreciated the commitment of UNDP towards ensuring social change and peaceful coexistence through the support of such training. My advice to you particularly our young graduates today, in respect to their religious or status in life, that you should fear God in your daily affairs and adhere to the teachings of your religion. Representative of the country director, UNDP, and program associate, Shogun Olushola, 
stressed the need for collaborative efforts to combat youth restiveness and complementing the government for sustainable peace and development. At UNDP, we will make adequate efforts within the available resources at our disposal at helping you realize your dream. There were presentation of certificates and badges to participants as graduates appreciated the opportunity given to them. In Jos, Appa, Abu Bakari Akubu, NTA News. That's it from Jos, but we'll take another break and Nationwide will continue shortly. <laughs> And that concludes Nationwide. We thank you for watching. Do have a pleasant evening. Bye for now.